Question one, what is replicated by a semi-conservative process? So semi-conservative refers to the fact that when something is duplicated, then half of it is going to be conserved from the original one, and the other half is going to be new. So in this case, it's usually associated with a DNA replication. So if we have a look at DNA replication, if we, ha if we have our double helix strand, if we unwind that so it looks like a ladder now, so it looks like this. With DNA replication, what occurs there is that this is split apart, like this, and then these, these two strands are the parent strands. And then once you have a new strand, which we'll put in black as well, this is the parent strand, and then new nucleotides will come along. And new nucleotides will attach themselves to the parent strand like this. Like this. So therefore, you, you get this process which is semi-conservative. So this part is the original. And then this part is new. So this is semi-conservative. And the trick to know about semi-conservative processes is that it has to have two helices. So it has to be this double rung structure. With all these other ones, with mRNA, with tRNA, they're all single-stranded molecules. They're not double-stranded, so therefore they can't be semi-conservative. So we can knock off all of these, A, B, C. We know that mRNA is a single-stranded. If it's single-stranded, how can half of it be from its parent and half of it be new? It can't be because it's just one. Whereas for, whereas for DNA, you have two different strands. So one strand can be old and one strand can be new. So therefore the correct answer is D, DNA only. Which enzyme catalyzes the elongation of the leading strand? So we've got a diagram here of some DNA replication occurring. So it catalyzes the elongation of the leading strand. So which one? So this is the leading strand over here. And then what causes this process of elongation like this? And we have a few different options. RNA polymerase, no, because we're not talking about RNA. We're talking about DNA replications. Straight away, we can get rid of that. How about helicase? Well, helicase, if you remember, is the enzyme that actually does the unwinding. It actually breaks the helix. This helix over here, right here. So it actually breaks that apart. So that's not actually what causes the elongation of the leading strand. It's not helicase. And just remember that anything ending with A's is an enzyme. Well, most things end ending with A's. Another example is catalase as well. How about DNA polymerase? Yes, that does make sense. It adds on extra nucleotides to the leading strand, and then that causes the elongation of the leading strand during DNA replication. So this one seems right. How about ligase? Ligase is not usually involved in here. Ligase means to kind of stick together an enzyme, an ase that sticks things together. And in this case, the ligase is usually involved uh, with genetic engineering. So if you want to you know, attach um, a piece of DNA or genetic code into a bacterium, then that's what it's used for. So not in this case. So how about this one? Question three. Which, what sequence of processes is carried out by the structure labelled X during translation? So we've got this ribosome here. This is our ribosome. As well as our mRNA. See how it's single-stranded, which is going through the ribosome. And this structure, which is attaching here, is our tRNA. And what's this thing at the top? Remember on one side, the tRNA, it has an anticodon. So anticodon has the word, has the letter T in it. So therefore, that's the, the tRNA has the anticodon. And the anticodon actually binds with a codon on the mRNA. So codon is on the mRNA. Okay, so let's look at these different answers. So A, combining with an amino acid and then binding to an anticodon. Well, it doesn't bind to an anticodon, the tRNA. Remember how we said the, the tRNA binds to the codon, the mRNA, so it's not this answer. Binding to an anticodon and then combining with an amino acid. Once again, not binding to an anticodon. 
binding to a codon and then combining with an amino acid. Well, that seems a bit more correct, but in fact, what this is kind of the wrong order because it has to bring this amino acid here, this AA or amino acid, it has to attach onto that first and then it travels over towards towards the codon, towards the ribosome, and brings that amino acid in. So this is incorrect as well, because it's not the right order. The right order is D. It combines first with the amino acid, it attaches onto it, and then brings it over, and brings it over to the mRNA and the codon there. And then it causes elongation of the polypeptide. Good. Question four. On which molecule is a codon found? So we mentioned before that tRNA has the left T in it, so then tRNA is a anticodon. And the one that's left over is mRNA. mRNA is a codon. Okay, so which molecule is a codon found? So it must be mRNA. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.